And what I'm doing right now is following up the header pipe assembly and on the other side you'll see the McCoonie carburetor conversion that really made this bike come alive. But I'm following it up with the sorting of its very unusual electrical system. And I'm pretty far along. What you're looking at right now on the left, right over here, is the AC regulator that keeps the bulbs in the headlamp from burning out. And also on the right of it, you'll see with the zip tie over here, the Pardue Brothers Flash Arena, which works in the DC converted battery system to make the LED and incandescent combination turn signals blink at the correct rate. And those work on two separate systems from the alternator. Uh, there's three total, and the third one, uh, which like the headlights, is alternating current and pretty much unregulated, um, it works the ignition system so that the bike will run without a battery. And sorting these three systems out and figuring them out, uh, it, it definitely takes uh, some patience. But I have got two new regulators that replace... Uh, three components. Actually they, actually, they replace two and add a regulator to the headlights to keep the, the bulbs from burning out. Uh, and anyway, I'll go over that in a minute as I work on the next thing, and that is to get the uh, front brake switch working. Okay, I've got a, an analog multimeter here, which I like to use to, for testing continuity, because I can see the needle move and I can see where there's some res resistance, maybe where there shouldn't be. And, you know, for me, it's just, it works better. And I hooked it up over here to the uh, two contacts, press a button, nothing. So now I know that switch is bad, so it's got to come out. Here's a quick snippet of what I've replaced, the components. This is the original relay, uh, which blinked very slowly. And again... The Pardue Brothers Flash Arena is the original DC voltage regulator that fit right underneath here. Actually, I think it went this way. And because the bike had been run without a battery, I was told that it was toast. And everything I read about it was that it was not very good in the first place. It did not have a regulator to regulate the AC voltage from the alternator that's going directly to the headlight switches and the headlight. So... This is one made in Taiwan that I purchased through the UK that's designed to fix that, to keep it from blowing bulbs and, and keep your light a little less flickery from AC current. Original rectifier, which fit right underneath here before you put the, uh, the tank on, using the same nut that you see right yonder. And uh, it tested fine, but it is a separate rectifier. And knowing the regulator was probably bad, this is for the DC side of the alternator that charges the battery, which runs everything from turn signals, tail light, stop light, to the horn. Things that you really, really need. So, anyway, uh, the machine that you see there now, which is hard to see because it's dark, is one I finally found. It wasn't expensive. There you can see the fins on it. And it is a combination rectifier regulator, which is how... They do, you know, conversions for classic British bikes and that kind of thing through, uh, like, Podtronics. And this one's the, it's designed specifically for these Hondas, amazingly. And it was, like, 20 bucks, uh, free shipping. And it plugged right in. I couldn't believe it. So far, it, it works great. I've tested it while riding the bike. And it's keeping the voltage at, uh, you know, no more than about 6.4, 6.5. One important, very important note is when you replace the DC regulator and rectifier with the combined unit that goes underneath the seat that I just showed you, where you have three wires that went to that old regulator, you want to put a jumper between the yellow and the black wire. And you can see I've got a little black jumper here. The green is redundant. Uh, it's actually green with the white stripe, and it doesn't really need to be connected to anything. Okay, I mentioned that I'd show the other side of the conversion. 
This is the header pipe and the reverse cone silencer, all stainless steel, and tuned for this uh, Makuni, which replaces the KN carburetor. It's a larger carb, and it's been very uh, meticulously jetted just for the XL250 by Dave Reinhardt. And it comes complete with the um, correct size throttle cable and the whole throttle assembly still allows you to use your original switch gear over there. You just move it over. And uh, it really, uh, this car, along with the, the tune header setup, really makes this bike run so much better. Really makes it come alive. Uh, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning was that these bikes used three separate systems for their electrical and that the headlights run off its own alternating current, unregulated, which I now have regulated with the alternating current, an AC regulator. And then uh, the other tail light, stop light, turn signals, horn, are run off the battery in DC. And then the other circuit, the last of the three, is another AC unregulated circuit that goes to the ignition coil and therefore runs the ignition so that you do not have to have a battery to start and run the bike or to have the headlight. One of the things that's uh, kind of problematic is the fact that the switch gear, both left and right, combine the switching of the DC current and the AC current. Though they're on separate switch contacts, they share a common ground. And I do believe that there's some bleed over. And over on the left side, everything works fine. The turn signals and the horn, but the high-low did not work which probably means that the power lead going into that switch uh, is somewhere is not connecting correctly. Anyway, I decided that I wanted to eliminate the headlights completely from the, the DC portion of the bike. And so I found an aftermarket high-low off headlight switch that fits perfectly between the, the throttle controls and the handlebar perch for the front brake and the original switch gear, which I still use uh, for the on off with the run. And I also use the off on switch at the bottom to turn the tail lights on. And it also turns on the instrument lights in the, the two clocks. And so this uh, switch also has a kill switch, which I'm not using, but I have this wired in so that uh, it's basically going direct underneath here and tying in and going, uh, you know, through the, the multi-pin connector, which uh, is down over here on this side, and then into the headlight shell where it needs to go. One thing you need to be aware of is this multi-pin connector that runs the main harness for the headlight. You know, I think it was supposed to be a quick disconnect deal, and I did pull them apart and exercise them, make sure the contacts are clean. But it has this pink wire, and you'll find it's not connected to anything. And if you look in the schematic, it'll say that it's, uh, you know, disconnected, not connected. It's an extra. I ended up using it along with a white pigtail that connects to the main harness multi-pin connector. And the pink controls the high beam headlight going into the headlight shell. And the white control controls the, uh, the low beam. And so I have those tied in. So before I actually put the tank back on and crank it up and check the uh, AC going to uh, the headlight through my new headlight switch, uh, I want to go ahead and check the DC circuit, make sure that's working fine. I've already plugged the battery back in. Uh, you can see uh, the battery connector there. What you can't see is that the, the new uh, regulator and rectifier combination, it's plugged in also. Uh, to the original connector that the old regular, the old rectifier was connected to. And I have this all wrapped, not in electrical tape, heavens no, I have this wrapped in uh, correct harness tape. And I'll show you the difference in that in a second. But anyway, I've got this hooked back up, and that disconnect is really easier to deal with than, than this fuse, which is the original 10-ounce uh, fuse, only in a slightly bigger holder, uh, because the... Uh, the shorter 10 ounce fuse is really hard to come by. 
Another thing I'll mention that you need to pay attention to is this uh, big jumble of connectors here at the back. I have it pulled out of this plastic boot right now, but this is your tail light, turn signals, and stop light in the back. And I was getting an intermittent stop light, and sure enough, it was a corroded connector. So I went ahead and pulled all of these apart, all of these out, and with each uh, little bullet connector, I clean it with a metal finishing pad with a little WD-40 on it. And then make sure it's seated nice and tight back in the female connector. And you really need to, to go through all of the connections, pull all the bullets out throughout the bike, and make sure they're nice and clean and tight and seated all the way. That'll help solve a lot of problems. And also, it's hard to see, but the, uh, the ground for the rear turn signal uh, is on a spade connector, and it's way back under here, under this little stamped black bracket and there's one on each side so again you'll need to pull those connectors off and clean the spade good and put it back on and make sure it's nice and tight. Got my ignition switch turned to the first position which is the only position there's off there's on. You can see my neutral lights on. I got blinkers. Got a horn. And I did check the rear brake light and tail light and the rear blinkers and they're working. So I'm going to crank her up and we'll check to see how my new headlight switch and AC regulator are working. Okay, so here we are. Separately, I can turn the tail light on. See the tail light? That's worked off the original switch gear right here that on off. And then on the left side, the horn and turn signals. But this is not used. This uh, high low has been replaced by the new switch over here which has high, low, and off. And I'm not using that actual switch, I'm using this one. This is harness tape, and that's what I use to, to wrap wires with. It has no adhesive, it's real flexible. Um, basically, I, I get it started uh, wrapped on itself, and then when I get to the end, I'll put uh, some shrink wrap on it, and it makes a really nice wrapped harness. And if you have to take it apart for any reason, you don't have this uh, tape uh, goo uh, all over the wires and everything. And then I'll also purchase this little kit, uh, which is really nice. It's enough to really rewire uh, a complete uh, Japanese motorcycle. It has male, female bullet connectors. It has these, these proper little um, really flexible rubber shields, uh, both for the male and female. And when they're all pushed together, it makes a nice little watertight uh, connection there. So I recommend to get something like this and do not use the connectors at your hardware store in the auto supply section. Because those are made of really cheap metal and they will not hold up. And so anyway, so there you have it. And the last thing I will do is when my new front brake switch comes in, I will... Put that in place and we should be working uh, hitting on all cylinders so to speak.